we get self-government, we'll transform the Gold Coast into a paradise in 10 years. That was the promise of Kwame Nkrumah. The Gold Coast, now known as Ghana, was a colony of Britain. Nkrumah led Ghana to become the first independent African country on March 6, 1957. Kwame Nkrumah's tremendous leadership abilities helped him spearhead the movement for the independence of Ghana, but his totalitarian presidency overshadowed his original achievements and he left Ghana in poorer condition than the country was in at the time of its inception. Kwame Nkrumah was born in Krofu Gold Coast in 1909. His early years were spent in Catholic missionaries, but after being exposed to politics in the Gold Coast, he traveled to the U.S. to study philosophy, theology, and science at Lincoln University and the University of Pennsylvania. In May 1945, Nkrumah began studies at the London School of Economics. While in London, he organized the 5th Pan-African Congress with George Padmore, a Trinidadian Pan-Africanist. When India achieved independence in 1947, it sparked Nkrumah's dreams of freedom for the Gold Coast. He declared, if we get self-government, we'll transform the Gold Coast into a paradise in 10 years. Nkrumah returned to the Gold Coast in 1949 and was disappointed by the condition in which he found his nation. The Gold Coast was plagued with nationalistic grouping and overly tied to colonial business interests. Nkrumah's next step was to set up a political party, the Conventional People's Party or the CPP. The CPP demanded self-government independent of Britain. Within a year, it had become the most popular party in the Gold Coast. While campaigning, Nkrumah was imprisoned for causing massive strikes and civil disobedience. While in jail, the CPP held an election and elected Nkrumah leader of government business, signifying that he was the prime minister of the Gold Coast and thus responsible for domestic government and policy. Nkrumah's slogan, Seek ye first the political kingdom and all else shall be added unto you, became extremely influential across Africa. Once elected, Britain freed Nkrumah so that he could form a new government. The next year, Nkrumah became the official prime minister of the Gold Coast. Finally, on March 6, 1957, the Gold Coast gained independence under the name Ghana. Unfortunately for Nkrumah, his presidency was unsuccessful in comparison to his prior accomplishments. Ghana's economy was in very poor condition. Nkrumah attempted to address this issue with a marketing board. A marketing board is a public agency that buys crops from farmers and sells them to foreign countries as exports. Nkrumah intended to use the farmers' money to build up the industry in Ghana. The marketing board was supposed to jumpstart the economy and eliminate the tumultuousness of the markets in the 1960s. However, it failed because when the board bought crops for less than the world price, local farmers would instead sell to neighboring countries or even the black market. After installing the marketing board, Nkrumah looked to further stimulate the economy with the Volta River project. At the time, Ghana had a surplus of bauxite, a mineral used to make aluminum. Nkrumah wanted Ghana to build a smelter and become a major exporter of aluminum. However, this required an enormous dam and a large power plant to feed the smelter. Nkrumah borrowed money from Britain, the United States, and the World Bank to help pay for the project. The Volta River project was designed to begin industrialization all across Ghana and loosen economic ties with Europe and America. Despite the successful appearance of the project, it was a catastrophe. The money borrowed was used to pay other companies to build the plant, giving Ghana huge debt. This led to higher taxes on rural cocoa farmers. Many chose to smuggle their cocoa into neighboring countries to avoid the taxes. The lake built for the dam forced thousands of residents to relocate. Even worse, the smelter found it cheaper to import bauxite from Jamaica, meaning the bauxite mines in Ghana never became developed. Essentially, both the marketing board and the Volta River project combined to put the economy in a worse state than it was before Nkrumah's efforts. From the start, there had been many doubters of Nkrumah's party because it was extremely totalitarian. The CPP was the only party allowed in Ghana, and Nkrumah named himself president for life. In 1966, just after the completion of the Volta River project, a military coup overthrew Nkrumah and the CPP. Ironically, many Ghanaians celebrated when the former hero was overthrown, and few responded to Nkrumah's broadcast requesting support against the coup. Despite his totalitarian actions, Nkrumah is still considered one of the most respected leaders in African history. In 2000, he was voted Africa's Man of the Millennium by listeners of the BBC World Service. Although Kwame Nkrumah never returned to Ghana, he continued pushing for his vision of African unity. At the age of 62, he died of skin cancer while in exile in Bucharest, Romania. He was buried in his hometown of Nkrumah, Ghana.